Hello and welcome to another edition of Middle Earth Friday for May 12th, 2017. This is episode 19. In today's episode, we're going to talk about BizTalk Server 2016 and Feature Pack 1, or what I'm calling Fabulous Pack 1. And you'll find out why soon. So Feature Pack 1 contains a lot of new capabilities for BizTalk Server. In today's episode, I'm going to focus on to specifically Power BI operational data and the advanced scheduler. In the community corner, we're gonna highlight some other pieces of work that other people have put forth related to Feature Pack 1. Uh, one is the step-by-step -step installation by Sandro, and then also Toon Van Hoot is going to talk about continuous delivery uh, using BizTalk 2016 Feature Pack 1 and Visual Studio Team services. Now for those who are going, what is this fabulous pack one all about? And I do think it's fabulous. And part of the reason why is that this is something that Microsoft has never done with BizTalk Server. So typically we see these fairly long release cycles, can usually be between 18 months and two years. Uh, and what we will see is cumulative updates, but those updates are typically to address any bug fixes or defects that customers discover after the release of the software. What's different about this is this is all new features that Microsoft has delivered um, in what they're bundling a feature pack one. Now this feature pack is available for enterprise customers who have SA and it's also available for the developer edition. If you are on standard uh, you will need to wait until the next full version of BizTalk in order to take advantage of feature packs. I would go ahead and take a look at the Microsoft documentation for more details on that specific topic. Now also note that this isn't the only feature pack that we're going to see for BizTalk Server 2016. I know the product group has plans for additional feature packs. I'm not exactly sure on the cadence of these feature packs, but it's something that we can expect. So diving in, what's in Feature Pack 1? Number one is deployment. So having the ability to use continuous integration to automatically deploy and update applications from VSTS. Now for those of you that are familiar with the BizTalk deployment framework, what you will see is we now have other options in terms of deployment. And uh, this is through this, this tooling. So while the BizTalk, de while the BizTalk deployment framework has it been a great community tool and hats off for those that have contributed. It is nice to see something being delivered by Microsoft and I would imagine it's something that they will keep up to date as new versions of BizTalk are released. Next up, new management APIs that allow you to manage your environment remotely through a RESTful interface. Now this RESTful interface has also been decorated with Swagger which makes it nice to consume by other tools. So you could imagine a scenario where perhaps Logic Apps is now actually doing some monitoring on your BizTalk server and calling the RESTful APIs when specific events occur. Next, analytics, which I find to be very important in this day and age. Uh, the first is around application insights and the ability to publish your tracking data and application performance telemetry up to the cloud with the rest of your applications. So we typically use application insights whenever we deploy say an API app or a custom web API so now it's really nice to be able to publish that BizTalk data there as well. In addition we have the ability to view operational data in Power BI. Uh, the organization I work for is a very big fan of Power BI and it's nice to be able to see this telemetry available really from anywhere which also includes your phone and I've included some screenshots of that um, in, in the content here today. From a runtime perspective, there's support for always-on encryption using the WCF SQL adapter. So if you have encryption at rest requirements, now you have a solution, you've got connectivity to that secure repository. In addition, we also have advanced scheduling capabilities and we have the ability to use um, these uh, these new and this new enhanced scheduler within our received locations. Now, initially, when I saw the documentation, I thought this might be a replacement for the task schedule adapter, which is also another community tool. I wouldn't say that it completely is at this point, but I will 
think that you will benefit from some of the additional capabilities within a schedule that you can use within your environment. Now, for the purpose of today's episode, we're going to focus on leverage operational data and advanced scheduling. So let's jump into Power BI Analytics for BizTalk Server 2016, Fabulous Pack 1. Now, what I'm going to do is walk you through uh, how you would go ahead and configure this feature. I'm not walking you through the install of Feature Pack 1. Uh, check out, we'll check that out in the community corner, but Sandro's done a great job of capturing that information. So with respect to the operational data feed from Power BI, here's the data that we have access to. And I'm not gonna go through the whole list, but this is the same data set that is exposed to you when you're using the BizTalk Admin Console. If you're ever in the BizTalk Admin Console searching for different service instances and you're using that tool, well, now you can find the same information using Power BI. And what's nice is if you wanna expose this data to other stakeholders, you can go ahead and do so without them having the admin console installed on their local machine, or worse, having to remote desktop into your production BizTalk servers. And I think we've all been there, or at least I have, on many occasions when I have an executive that wants to know, okay, how many messages do we receive? You know, what's the average processing time? So now we've got some information at our fingertips that doesn't require any sort of custom development in order to surface it. Now, from a prerequisite standpoint, and this is specific to the Power BI operational data, you do need to have Power BI Desktop. Uh, you do not need to have this installed on your BizTalk server. I would advise against it. You really can have it anywhere, and you want to ensure that you have Feature Pack 1 installed on your BizTalk server. In the event your BizTalk server does not have IIS, I know that might be hard to fathom, uh, you will need IIS because we're gonna enable a couple virtual directories or IIS web applications in order for us to expose this data from our BizTalk environment. Now, if you don't have the Power BI desktop, go ahead and download it here. Uh, you will need to sign in with your organizational or school credentials in order to make this work. Next, on the BizTalk server, uh, we need to go ahead and provision uh, this web application. And here's the command that we're gonna go ahead and call. And I've gone ahead and run it on my particular server. Now I have grayed out or blocked the username and password for this particular instance, but you'll get a sense of the web application that's going to be created inside of IIS called the BizTalk Operational Data Service. If we navigate to that URL, and in this case, I'm on the BizTalk server, so it's localhost BizTalk Operational Data Service, what I'm going to see is a data description, which includes all of the different data sets that are gonna be available to Power BI. Now, from Power BI, we can actually open up a template file. And we'll see that this template file is called BizTalk Operational Data .pbit. This is something that's going to be found inside of your BizTalk installation directory. So Microsoft BizTalk Server 2016 operational data service. And then what we can do is open up this file with Power BI Desktop. And then we need to point it at our operational data service URL. If you're on the same BizTalk server, this will be localhost, but otherwise you'll want to include the full URL for your BizTalk server and this virtual directory. With that set up, click on load, and what you will find is a template report that includes data, that, in, that includes a series of reports that you can actually use to build out a dashboard. And because this is a template, you can completely customize this. You can add new visualizations, you can reduce visualizations, you can change the filtering, the sorting, you know, if there's applications you don't use, like say BizTalk Application 1 or BizTalk EDI application, you can completely exclude those by adding additional filters within your Power BI template. So let's jump into a demo. We'll, we'll show this in real time. As you may recall from a previous edition of Middleware Friday, I had a solution that had BizTalk 2016 integrating with the line of business application. And when there is an exception, that BizTalk would go ahead, 
create an event and as of send that event over to Logic Apps, which in turn would create a ticket inside of ServiceNow. So I'm going to go ahead and use the same application in order to generate some traffic so that we can actually see the Power BI dashboard update. So now I'm on the BizTalk server, and in this case, I do have the Power BI dashboard set up. Now, what we can see on the right-hand side is that we've got all of the different entities and tables that have been captured and provided to us as part of this Power BI template. We could go ahead and modify this because it is a template. We could drag and drop additional fields as we see fit. Uh, here, let's take a look at some of the attributes that are being captured here. So we do have a date time slider. We can go ahead and restrict different date times and we can see that the dashboard is completely contextual aware and automatically updates um, based upon our date time range. You know, we can go ahead and see our adapter count to see how many messages have been processed through each of these, these adapters. Now, if we want to run a few more of these messages through, we can go ahead and do so. And we can see that the messages are now being processed. We can then go ahead and click on the refresh button and we'll see our underlying data set being updated to reflect this. If we click on some of the other tabs, we can see different instance counts. We can go ahead and check out subscriptions. And with all of these, we can go ahead and deselect different attributes that we don't want to display. And uh, we can see, you know, if we've got orchestrations that are subscribed or different send ports where we've created subscriptions, and we can choose the different service class in order to differentiate these. We can also, once again, expand our date time and we'll see our data set update as a result. We also have the ability to check out track messages. Now, we won't see any tracked bodies that have been, if we've got tracked bodies enabled, uh, but we can go ahead and see the different durations that some of our messages have taken in order to get processed. We can see some average time, you know, the size of the message, max size, things of that nature. Now, what is really important to think about in this case is that Microsoft's provided us with a template in Power BI. We can absolutely enrich, enrich this data set. We can add additional data sources to this data set and actually create a very composite report and dashboard for our business. So if we have BAM data, we could bring that data in. If we had, say, custom tracing or tracking that we've built ourselves, we can now bring that data in as well. And when we're done, we can actually go ahead and publish that. And we can go ahead and publish a dashboard to the Power BI service. So here's a look at our data that is in, in the actual Power BI service. Now, in order to go ahead and have this data refreshed, we do need the on-premise data gateway. So we can go ahead and schedule the refresh of our data through this, this mechanism. We can do so using either the personal on-premise data gateway or, or the enterprise on-premise data gateway, the one that we've used for Logic Apps and the SAP connector in previous editions of Middleware Friday. Now, what is interesting, once we have that set up and we do have the service receiving our data and even having our scheduler set up and pulling the data from on-prem, is now we have the ability to access that from pretty much any, any device. So that could be an iPad, that could be an Android tablet, that could be a Surface, but it also can be an iPhone or an Android phone. And here's a few screenshots from my phone where I've actually been able to view this BizTalk 2016 data through Power BI and then actually go ahead and drill down into it. Now, as I mentioned before, we do have the ability to completely customize what this report and dashboard looks like. So if we want to create you know, more mobile friendly dashboards, we certainly have the ability to do that using Power BI. And I think that's what's really powerful and that's what makes this the fabulous pack is the fact that Microsoft has created you know, all of these different Lego blocks that we can now assemble together in order to build really compelling solutions. And while we've had this in a lot of the other Azure services like Logic Apps, it's great to see this to be included within BizTalk Server as it allows us to really enrich 
some of those investments that we've made in the BizTalk platform. Next, let's move on to scheduling. And the first thing to note is that this is not an adapter. This is not a full replacement for the task scheduler adapter. What this is, is this is an enhancement to the scheduler that exists within our received locations, which are adapter agnostic. Now, what are some of the new capabilities? Well, let's go through it. So the first one is different support for time zones and daylight savings time. So this is nice for organizations that live in jurisdictions where we do see time changes and you may have something that needs to trigger at the same time. So the alternative is someone usually has to, you know, stay up late or wake up early in order to deal with this sort of situation. The other thing that we have the ability to control is the recurrence and the granularity of that recurrence. So this can be daily, this can be weekly, or this can be monthly. So in the case of daily, we, we also have the ability to start from a specific date, which is nice. You know, think of go live situations where you've done all your testing, you've promoted all your code to prod, you're ready to have a, a go live, but you don't want to turn everything on yet because you're afraid something might fire. Next, we have weekly, which is completely new. And what's really interesting is now we have the ability to go ahead and click on different days of the week that we want this to be invoked on a weekly basis. So think of your processes where they run, you know, during every business day, but they don't run on the weekend. Or you might have processes that only run on the weekend, they don't run during the week. So now you can actually control these types of schedulers using this new feature. And lastly, we can take a look at monthly. And what's interesting about monthly is we can choose the months that we want to apply this to. So think of month-end scenarios, quarter-end scenarios, year-end scenarios, now you don't have to write a whole lot of custom logic in order to deal with those types of dates. Another interesting feature that I like is this idea of a last. So no longer we worried about is it the last day of the month on the 30th, the 29th, in the case of a leap year, the 28th or the 31st, Microsoft's just gonna go ahead and take care of that for us. So fine, that's pretty cool and really happy to see that. So I don't really have too much of a demo per se, but let's just go back to our VM and take a closer look at these new features. So back in my BizTalk VM, I can go ahead and click on schedule. I can go ahead and enable the service window. And here's where I have the different options from a daily, weekly, or monthly perspective. So I don't think it'd be too interesting to actually watch a file wait for a window to be enabled in order to pick up that file so I'll spare you from from that particular feature but now you've had the ability to take a look underneath the hood to see just what features are enabled within this feature pack. Moving over to our community corner as I mentioned before I wasn't going to go through the step-by-step -step installation in part because Sandro has already done that for us. So he's got a blog post where he walks through some of the features, some of the versions that this feature pack is enabled for, uh, and then what you can expect, what sort of the impact of actually installing this feature pack. Uh, you will need to restart your computer and some of the features which I've already covered. In addition, we've got Toon who has created a blog post on the Codit website and Tune walks through the continuous integration or continuous deployment features that are now enabled through this BizTalk Server 2016 feature pack. So I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of details, but Tune does a great job of walking you through the configuration and the experience of getting this set up in order to ena enable automatic builds and deployments for BizTalk Server 2016. So if that's of interest to you, highly recommend that you check out this blog post. So thanks again for watching. Uh, I do have a question for you. I do have an ask. And the question is, what do you want to see on future episodes of Middleware Friday? I've gone ahead and created a survey monkey. Uh, link is on the screen. Link is also in the comments. And as part of this survey monkey, I've got one question. It's very simple. And really all it is is what would you like to see? 
uh, it's a radio sorry it's a checkbox a series of checkbox so you can choose more than one so go ahead and fill that out and I will try to do more shows that target that specific topic so I'm gonna leave this open this will become a regular thing and uh, go ahead and please give me the feedback uh, my goal is to make this as valuable for the viewers as possible and the only way I can do that is if I know what what you're looking for I have tried over the last 19 episodes to include a variety of topics I do want to hear back from you in order to determine what's what I should be focusing on next. Thanks again to BizTalk360 for being a great partner of the show. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and check out their website and the Integrate 2017 event that's occurring in London in late June. Um, I'll be there, as will many other MVPs and people from the Microsoft product groups that are in the integration space. So it is definitely the integration event of the year, you're going to want to go ahead and check it out. Uh, with that said, thanks again for watching. Uh, we'll catch you next week on Middleware Friday.